Well, good afternoon and welcome to September Gray Fine Art Gallery. My name is September and I'm the director here at September Gray Fine Art. And we're very fortunate to have Eleanor Neal, Landscape of Memory, that opened last month, Women's History Month. So it was a beautiful opening. And as you can see, the show is just incredible. And I love the show because it's talking about women, uh, Southern women, Southern myths. Um, and memory, which I think a lot of artists are always going in and looking at memory when they're using their work. Um, and it's so important to us to understand memory. So I love the way she's explaining it through her work. So I'm going to share a little bit about Eleanor, and then we're going to jump right into the conversation um, and just let her take us away with her story about landscape and memory. Eleanor received her education, her bachelor's of fine art in Indiana University. She also received her Master's of Science at Indiana University and her Master's of Fine Art at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago, Illinois. Right now, she's in a group exhibition at the Museum of Contemporary Art here at MOCA GA, Lines Exhibition. In January in 2023, Eleanor Neal was selected to exhibit in the Sarah Ball Alice Art Museum in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a celebration of art making and feminism. Eleanor has also exhibited at the Marietta Cobb Museum of Art, the Dalton Gallery at Agnes Scott Co um, College, and presently you can see her work at the Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And if you have an opportunity, you can read her bio and her extensive um, exhibition list as well that's here in the gallery, so I invite you to please make sure you read it. This is called landscapes of memory and I don't know if any of you have had a chance to read her artist statement I'm not going to read all of it but I just want to read it so you can get a feel of this work as you're looking and just it makes you connect with the work the artwork I create speaks to my interest in memories and place where identity and nature connect I explore abstraction in connection to myths and southern stories Within a web of entanglement of lines I communicate stories of survival isolation and empowerment Inspiration comes from nature, Spanish moss, which lives on the trees along the Georgia sea coast. It holds water, which gives it life. Sometimes I feel present, sometimes not. Textures, sculptured, colorful beeswax, paper of organic shapes, echo water and form. I'm interested in women's voices from historical places like the Georgia Sea Islands and the Gullah Islands. I reflect on historical stories of powerful women as they chant, dance, connect, and disconnect through migration and separation of family. These cultural stories are explored within a web of entanglement of lines and layering of material. Ultimately, I reflect on hope and the importance of staying in a place of empowerment, even in the middle of change, chaos, and uncertainty. And I'm gonna to skip to the bottom and read the spontaneity and unpredictability of process gives me another voice in the abstraction of nature and connecting with a sense of place. I reflect on the landscape of the South and the women of the South, how their spirit can carry off through nature, plants, flowers, trees to move, change, yet always searching for a place of permanence and empowerment. Eleanor Neal, Landscape and Memory. Why the title for this show? Well, first I'd like to say thank you, September Gray for giving me the opportunity to show my work here in your gallery. Um, memory is part of my story because I have traveled and I have connected and I have used the idea of all of these materials and all of these things that I have been exposed to. How do I create this into a whole new world of artwork? that reflects back on these places and these spaces that I've been in. Um, the work has a common thread. Um, first, I'll start with how it all started, right? Yes. And I think we talked about this right. last night. How did this all begin, you know, right. when you decided one day you wanted to be an artist? Um, and I shared with you then that um, I grew up in the North. I'm actually from Indiana. Um, and growing up in Indiana, we used to uh, spend a lot of time in the summer with family. And we would go to the beach or we would go to out on my uncle's boat and just spend a lot of time near the water. 
I also, at that time, believed that it was important to be outside. So I spent a lot of time outside playing as a child. And we didn't have computers and iPads and all of this. It was about playing outside and right. having fun outside. And then I would have my sketch pad and I would do a lot of drawing and a lot of just having fun outdoors. Mm -hmm. And then also my parents believed in going to museums. So as a little girl, my mom, we'd get on the South Shore train because I'm from Indiana, and we'd go to uh, the Museum of Natural History. We'd go to the Art Institute of Chicago or the Field Museum. And so seeing all of this art just, you know, was so amazing and it always stick with me. So as life moved on, I continued that wanting to always create, create art, right? Um, I started out as a figurative artist, as most mm -hmm. abstract artists do, right? Um, so drawing people was important to me, um, creating landscapes with people in them. So it was all about being figurative. But at one point, I began to feel like there's another story here and there's a new direction that's going to happen eventually when it's time to happen, right? So then fast forward, I had the opportunity of going to Tougaloo College, and Tougaloo College was an amazing place. And I had the opportunity to work with John T. Scott, and there are several people here in the room who would know that name. John T. Scott was a master artist. He was a sculptor, he was a painter, he was a printmaker. And he was one who would say, stop and look at what's around you. Stop and take a moment and look at that feather over there, or look at that tree over there, look at that flower, spend time with nature. And so, in addition to creating art and creating and teaching us process, um, he was about taking in the environment. So I spent time really, really embracing being at Tougaloo College. One of the things I noticed right away coming from Indiana University was they actually had a graveyard on the campus. I had never experienced that coming from a big university <laughs> like <Right>. IU. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, they have a graveyard here. This is so weird on a college campus, right? And then I began to see and feel there's a strong sense of community here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a sense of family here that I didn't feel at IU that I was feeling there. So it was really just a magical, amazing place. And then my, I would say my pivotal moment was one evening, I was there on the um, um, campus area where there were all these trees and these trees were like in a circle, a circular design. And then I noticed this weird stuff hanging from the trees. It looked like hair or something, yeah. right? And then I noticed that the trees were in a circular shape, which I thought was interesting. It was an evening where the moon was really bright. And so I sat there on the bench and I just got still and quiet. And I reflected because I noticed with the breeze blowing, all the trees were flowing in one direction. And it almost looked like they were dancing. It was just a breathtaking, beautiful moment. Very surreal, right? So I sat there quietly and just took it all in. And the next morning, I couldn't wait to talk to John. And I said, oh my gosh, John, let me tell you about last night. And I told him and I said, I sat there and I watched the trees look like they were dancing. Mm -hmm. It was like a beautiful dance, a circular dance. And he said, hmm, go outside right now and go grab that moss from high up on the tree and bring it in and see how you can use that in a way that can touch your work, whether it's physically or some kind of emotional reference to it, but bring that in because that was an important moment for you, right? And so I did. And I sat there and I thought about it and he was teaching us an interesting process at the time. It was called um, beeswax monotypes. So we were actually using beeswax so he was teaching us his process and at the same time I was thinking about 
that moss. He said, that was Spanish moss that you engaged with. And he said, coming from New Orleans, that's what I know. So we talked a lot about what it was because I had no idea what this interesting plant was. So as time went on, I began to create these uh, beeswax um, monotypes. And, and for those of us that don't know what a monotype is, explain a monotype. Okay, very good question. A monotype, mono mean, meaning one. A monotype means one, actually one unique print that's created on an etching press. Uh, it's a one of a kind, so you can't, I can't make another one exactly like the one I've made. And what was unique about the ones we were creating is they were created with beeswax. So most monotypes are just created right on the plexiglass, the artist paints, and then you apply your paper and it goes through an etching press. Well, the process he was teaching us, we were able to incorporate this natural beeswax with it, which made it so much more unique, more vibrant. This is one of them. Uh, you see them around the room. And what happens is the beeswax enriches the colors, enrich enriches the texture in the piece, as well as gives it that layering process. So all of these are done as unique, one-of-a-kind pieces, of which is what a monotype is. They are not um, prints, meaning you can buy a mono print. And that would mean that there are multiples and multiples. Uh, mine are monotypes, uh, meaning that they are unique and one of a kind. I can't go and make this exact piece again, or I can't go and make um, the blue over there make that exact piece again. Um, so that makes it so unique. So fast forward. Um, I created these monotypes. I was so excited about them. And um, I actually had two uh, of them to receive a major award at Hampton University and a major exhibition there. I was so excited about that. Um, and fast forward again, time goes by and we lost John. And that was um, very hard for me to um, to lose him because he was such a gifted art maker who believed in, he would say, live New, or New Orleans, uh, thrive in New Orleans, and die in New Orleans. That was his home, that was his love, right? So it was all about being there. And I learned so much just from being with him during that time. So as time moved on, fast forward, and I'm creating the monotypes, I decided that I wanted to go back to school so I knew if I was going to go back, it had to be where I wanted to be, which was in Chicago at the Art Institute of Chicago. They had a program that allowed me to go during the summers and then take my coursework during the fall and spring. And that was really amazing. So during that time, I had another pivotal moment. I was actually able to hear about the artist Julie Dash, who has written the book Daughters of the Dust, mm -hmm. as well as the film Daughters of the Dust. I was blown away. When I saw the film, when I read her book, I was blown away. And to see the actual Gullah people, to see these people um, in the South, right. in this isolated, isolated. world, right in this other world that I was not familiar with, and here I am from Indiana, living in the South, right? So it was kind of a weird kind of setup there. And so I started to research more, and I decided then when I go back um, in the fall, I've gotta go to the islands. I've gotta go, I've gotta see, I've gotta spend time on the islands. I've gotta walk that water area. I've gotta see where this Spanish moss grows. So I did that. I went to Jekyll and um, Savannah and Asabal Island, different islands, and it was amazing. It was amazing because I was there walking the land, experiencing those trees filled with Spanish moss and being around the people. And that was so engaging to be there and to be a part of that place, right? And so 
I began to dig deeper into what is this moss that I'm so in interested in. What does it do and how does it function? So I began to research and I found that it exists independently of the tree. It doesn't harm the tree. The tree doesn't harm it. And what's amazing is there were places that I went to on the boat where the trees were dead, but the moss was growing really strong, right? It was a really inter interesting interaction between what was around in the environment and then the growth that was happening at the same time. And then to see the birds carry it off and all this kind of stuff. And so then I went back and reflected on part of the film and the book of Daughters of the Dash, there's this part where the Nana, the Nana is the grandmother. She's the one who is the leader of all the people. And she's sitting on this tree stump in the middle of the forest and all the family and people are around her. And she's talking about empowerment, the future, um, being strong as women, being strong as a people and a community. And at the same time, she's talking to all the people around her, the women, the children, the fathers, the men, the grandfathers, everybody is focused on her. She takes her hand and she takes this cloth, a small piece of cloth, and she picks up as she's talking and puts in this cloth um, rocks, crystals, bones, um, hair and she's constantly adding things that belong on the island there, the people, into this cloth. And then after she puts it all in this cloth in her hand, she ties it really tight. She wraps it and ties it really tight with twine and with the moss. And she ties it, ties it really tight, makes it really tight and she then she buries it in the ground. And what she talked about was the importance of legacy, and she talked about not forgetting your roots, and not forgetting who you are. And no matter if you stay on the land, or if you leave and go to New York, and go north and go south, wherever you go, you always know where you are rooted, where home is, right? So it was such a beautiful, powerful moment. Then I noticed they're all in a circle. There's that circle again, right? Mm -hmm. And that embracing of that circle. So I began to really think about the importance of how this legacy and how these women warriors who were also important, this Nana, who was the strong force of this family. She was the leader and she was the one who was actually the force behind. So that was really interesting to me. Wow, so that took you down to the Gullah Islands. Talk mm -hmm. about Dufusky Island. Oh, um, And I okay. want you to mention this, it was so interesting. When we opened the show in March, mm -hmm. which was Women's History Month, there was an article that came out in Town and Country about Jean Ash, Arthur Ashe's wife, um, his, yeah, Arthur Ashe's wife, and she was a photographer. And she had actually gone down to Dufusky Island to photograph this isolated place. And it came out the same month that we opened the show, and I just thought it was so ironic that this happened around the same time. But this island is truly isolated, and I wanted you to expand on why, what made you go down to Dufusky Island mm -hmm. and to study this along with the Gullah Islands and the other islands you were kind of running across mm -hmm. as you were doing your research. Yeah, so um, when I went to like Asaba Island, that was the first time I'd experienced a private area where you actually um, don't look at it as quote tourism kind of place very rustic very primitive right um, and artists go there writers go there and spend time on the island which was amazing you take the ferry over and go so fast forward to it was in October that I had the wonderful experience of going to finding out about Defusky Island and it was really it's not far from Hilton Head. You actually have to go to Hilton Head or Savannah and take a water ferry over to Defusky. Um, once you get there, it's like, it was like being in that film in Daughters of the Dust, being right there listening to Nana talk to the family. It was so beautiful and primitive and isolated and 
I didn't feel like I was in a commercial area. You know, you go to Savannah, you go to Hilton Head, you know, you try to experience that, but it's still quite commercial, right? You go to Defusky and you walk that land and you sit down with the storyteller there and there's amazing storyteller there. Um, and she talks about how few Gullah people are left on the island and she talks about the importance of the history, right? And she talked about the importance of trying to maintain that land, how they're losing it, okay? And so it was such a powerful time and moment for me. And, and at that time, I was thinking, okay, how can I get back here? Because I want to study this more. At that time, you could not like stay on the island overnight. You had to stay in Savannah or Hilton Head, which isn't far, and take the ferry. The ferry is about an hour away. But, so they don't really want outsiders to stay. But I went online this morning and Googled Defusky, mm -hmm. and it really hurt my heart because now houses are set up where you can go and stay in someone's home. They're renting out their home so that the tourists can come now and take over. And that is really heartening to hear because that's one of the very, very few Gullah places left right. that actually is owned by Gullah, is owned by the people, where you can walk the land, you can go to the grave site, you can go to the little schoolhouse, you can go and get so much history about Gullah from this beautiful place. You can sit down and um, just spend time there quietly, right? But to see that really hurts. So then it makes me think, well, what's next, right? So are people going to buy up, take the land away, and then make it a commercial kind That's of That's normally setting? what happens. And I'm sure Jean would be hurt by that too because I purchased, I highly recommend you get the book, The Fusky Island by Jean yes. Ash. You can um, find it online, I think. And she did a series of black and white photographs that are amazing and she really captures the essence of the people um, the essence of the land and i would say she was there during the time arthur was still living she's made okay, several they were trips. right they went together I at one time right. alex haley, haley was still i living. noticed and he wrote a he nice wrote, article yes. and i actually printed it if anyone wants to read it it's a beautiful yes, article. Yes, it's beautiful. So I know she would be heartbroken now to go online and to see this. So what I'm hoping to do is to get back there before change continues to exist because I think as change happens, it takes away. It and it takes away from these people who truly deserve to have and own their land. Preserve it. And preserve that land. Because there's so much yeah. we're, we're losing. Yes. And one of the things I notice, the younger people are leaving, right? They don't want to stay. You know, they want to go. So they leave. And that's kind of what the Nana talked about in Daughters of the Dust. So it's the older generation that's really trying to hold on and preserve and uh, maintain. So it's kind of like the secret island that I highly recommend if you have an opportunity, if you truly want to experience Gullah right now, the Fusky Island is one that uh, I recommend and where I plan to go back and, and spend time. One of the things I also do, um, I spend time at residencies and I try to get away from Atlanta, so to speak. And one of my favorite residencies where I did a lot of the black and white images that you see here, the ink drawings, um, is Hambage. And Hambage is about uh, a couple hours away from here. Um, and it is an artist residency where artists can go and spend time. Um, you get your own cabin. You can be there from two weeks to a month. And you have access to um, the land. Um, space, time away, and they invite writers, visual artists, sculptors, um, dancers, musicians, scientists, natural scientists to come and just be, right, and just create. And one of the things I would do while I was there is spend time in darkness. And what do I mean by that? When you think about here at night, there is no darkness. There are street lights, there are building lights. I can't get darkness, right? 
I go there and because it's so isolated and because they don't have a lot of quote street lights, you're talking about 600 acres of land and about what, nine, 10 cabins. So it's truly, truly dark at night to the point where I can look up and see stars. It's just absolutely beautiful. So I spent a lot of time working in my studio on the floor, sometimes in darkness, sometimes just listening to the sounds of the night creatures, all the animals up there and insects and all that kind of stuff. And so it inspired a lot of the mark making, the movement of the mark making in line and in ink and in drawings that I created there. So that was exciting for me to spend time there. Yeah, and I do that a lot. Right, I'm just thinking about the land and, and giving away our land and not inheriting the land. It just makes me think about the parable. It was, it's a parable of a fisherman, but how we leave the land our ancestors have given us and so we don't take it. We move away, we build industries, we, we run companies, we make money, we build, we build, we retire and then we have nothing to go back to. We end up having to spend money to find something that we had actually inherited and someone had left for us, but we had given it up. So it's just so funny to work all your life and to leave that and then try to find that sense of peace again. Yeah. And it's not there. And it's not there. Because we don't yeah. realize our inheritance. Right, you yeah. Know? And so my work is about trying to hold on to that sense of memory. Of Let me ask you, in regards to that, holding mm -hmm. on to your sense of memory, mm -hmm. do you feel like in your work you're searching for your roots or heritage when you're doing your own research? Are you trying to find lost memories and a part of your history in doing mm -hmm. this work as well? That's a good question. I do think about that a lot because I think about the fact that I'm from the North, but I'm living now in the South, and now this interest in the South and this interest in people who are from the past and trying to hold on to their existence, right? So I think about that. I, I spend time um, researching now more of my family background as a result of this. And I spend more time with the elders in my family having conversations of growing up and their experiences and whatnot. So yes, I think this work, being in this sense of place, being at these places that I've experienced um, in storytelling and listening to the elders storytell, right? Yes. I think it does affect you to want to dig deeper into your own roots. Listening to the elders, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, you spoke briefly about one of your professors that was a huge influence yes. for you during school. Mm -hmm. Who are your other influences that influence mm -hmm. your work as mm -hmm. you've kind of gone through school and mm -hmm. as a professor at Clark mm -hmm. and, and growing in your work? Mm -hmm. Who would you list as some of the oh, influences? Oh, there are there's so many. I'll, I'll name a few. Um, of course, I've talked about John. Um, while I was there at Tougaloo, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mo Brooker and Richard Hunt, who um, has, has been a, a delight to know and a very, very focused artist. He and I artist. came to your, yes. um, your yeah, when you finished you your program at the Art Institute you together did. to you celebrate sure you. I remember yes, that. Yes, you did. Uh, I'm also intrigued with like Julie Maher too. I love her work, her mark making, right? Her sense of mapping, her sense of history and talking about her heritage, right? It's always there. It's always there. I, I love her work. Uh, I'm inspired too by Mildred Thompson mm -hmm. and her sense of materials right. and not only her uh, printmaking pieces that I just love so much, but her paintings and her stories and her music, right? And then her sculptures, like layer after layer after layer. I love it, right? Um, I'm, I'm influenced by so many people. There's um, uh, impressionist artists like, or no, I would say abstract expressionists like Mark Toby. I love his sense of mark making and the way he uses line in a more meditative way. And then there's Sam Gilliam, right, who is the master of materials. And he and um, his sense of bring it, he reminds me sometimes of John, how they use all these materials in Jack Whitten mm -hmm. to create, right? And it's like, everything is accessible to us. There is no, you can't use, right? Uh, and I love his colors and his textures and whatnot. And then, you know, there's um, Howardina Pendel, mm -hmm. 
who comes off the canvas and then takes these amazing structures and creates them and uses this dot method of paper and just layer and layer and layer and layer, right? You might so. have to repeat some of these names because if you're not familiar, she's <laughs> naming some amazing artists, you might want to do some research because these are incredible yeah. artists yeah. she's naming. Yeah. She's naming. And one of my buddies is over there, Kevin Cole. Kevin Cole, Cole yes. yes. Yes, who Amazing is another artist. one who has been an influence and, and one who uses materials in oh, an amazing yeah. way. Incredible. Yes, and who was also there when we were at John T. Scott's um, exhibition there in New Orleans, Circle Dance. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so. I love it. And when you were talking about the spirit and the roots and not forgetting your roots, of course mm -hmm. I thought about Freddie Styles. Oh, yes. You know? Yes, 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 and just yes. The Roots series. Yes, I love. yes, you know, yes. There's all these influences. Mm -hmm, we need mm -hmm. to all get together sometime because there's just too many of us that are influencing each other and just right, having right. these great conversations yeah. and they're all right. And it's good for our young people to know about exactly, these as well, exactly. Right? I'm knowing your foundation, mm -hmm. yes, and who these artists are, right. Um, we've talked so much. You've done such a great job of explaining your work and um, the cultural issues through your work, which I really think has to do with our history. Really, mm -hmm. um, are there any other issues you think that you're talking about outside of? Uh, the spirit and the history and, and women and southern myths. Mm -hmm. Are there anything, I, I don't you know, know if there's another yeah. part of that. So this morning, right, and sometimes I watch um, Saturday morning, um, the uh, news show that comes on. And so this morning I happened to have the show on where I was looking over my notes and everything for today. And they were focusing on climate change and these people in Panama, right, who have been in a position where they're going to have to leave their land and they're gonna to have to leave their homes. And their homes are these little, like little shacks right in the water. And the water has taken over. And so, although they look like these little shacks, when you went inside, when they filmed and went inside, they were precious little places that belonged to these people. Very precious, so precious that when they would go to their little market, they wouldn't use bags. The women made these beautiful baskets. So they were thinking about the environment and they wanted to make sure that when they shop, they only use the baskets. It was just so heartbreaking to see and to know that they're about to lose their land to water, climate change. So. This quote was literally on the wall and I had to write it down. I want to share it with you. It said, people who lose their tradition lose their soul. And then, that was printed on the wall, but then the little lady said, no, no. And she was a little old lady. She mm -hmm. says, no, 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 no. She says, they took it, they take it with them inside. So what she was saying was, when I leave this place and have to go to the new land that they've set aside for us in these horrible brick places of this new construction where they've got to live, where there's no water, it's terrible. She says, I'm gonna hold on to my memories of my land and my home. This is my home. So I'll never lose it and I'll never leave it. So that was like, wow, what a full circle, right? And that's where I think the Nana was talking in Daughters of the Dust. Right. That's where I feel that I go when I go to these places of memory and take and inspired by where I'm at. It's all about what you hold inside. Mm, so beautiful. I want to end there. What Thank you, you hold inside. Mm -hmm. Well, before I open it up to questions, mm -hmm. what's next for Eleanor Neal? What, what's new? What's happening? What's your yeah, next project? Right. Well, I know. forgot to mention these eco plant prints here. I'll say that real quick. They are made with natural dyes and tannins um, that are used in the um, water with the plants, and I boil it and create these interesting um, eco prints. So now these are all done on paper. 
but now I'm going to be experimenting with um, selected Japanese paper mm. and I'm going to be experimenting with uh, fabric with okay. them so Japanese, that's going to be that a, a softer texture yeah very yeah some light, of it is right. very translucent and right. transparent so I'm experimenting oh. with that and that's been very exciting okay. at the same time I want to go back and spend time on Defusky Island yes and see where that takes me in terms of the new work um, and I'm very excited about I want to go to Defusky Island yeah. now. We'll I'm to so make it intrigued. A road trip. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I have to do a trip. Yes, okay. yes. So that is, those are several things that I have that I'm looking forward to working on in the near future. Well, we hope you keep moving in landscape and memory. This is absolutely beautiful, Eleanor. Thank you. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to open it up for QA. Yes, Jim. Eleanor, I have a question. Mm -hmm. When you're in those places like the Fusky and yeah. places like that, mm -hmm. I know you have moved into a different realm, mm -hmm. but do you ever get a desire to do representational or figurative stuff? You know, it's funny you ask that because one of the people um, who I like a lot is um, Allison um, Sar. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And I look sometimes at her primitive, almost um, primitive looking figures, and I can almost see something like that, and then my mark making on top to almost hide it. But like the woman is there, but she's not there. The spirit is there, but it's not there. That piece right up there, that frame piece, is um, based upon Am I Human? And it's the story about a woman named Solitude from Guadalupe, who was a slave woman who, in a zombie state, would question if she were actually a real woman. So sometimes I do think about what if and what would it be like, but I think it would be something very primitive-like and then the layering on top. So you'd have to look really hard to find her there. I think that would be wonderful. Mm. As someone said in this particular piece, they saw a woman praying. Yeah, you said And I that thought, today. wow, okay. You said, I see a woman praying in this piece. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I said, it's what you see, you know? Mm. Okay. Yes. When did it all sort of click? I would say as I create more and as I move through my work, it talks and speaks to what comes next and it leads me to the next path, if that makes sense at all. Um, I'm inspired by other things like sound, um, scent. I'm into lavenders and all of these kinds of natural scents. And then I think that when I look at the monotypes and I see the moss and it gives me this sense of abstraction and then I go to the drawings and I feel the movement of the line and I come back and I look here so they kind of inform each other. And then I move over to the eco plant prints of which are based upon ground and leaves and plants in ground, which is based again on the life of the plant life, right? So I think it starts to click when I see a connection. There's a thin connection that happens throughout all the work and that inspires me. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. It's happy to be here in Silver Corn Hill. Mm -hmm. And Thank you. Uh, uh, I can tell about most of, most of the things you're talking about, mm -hmm. especially nature and the moss mm -hmm. and the trees mm -hmm. and the Yazoo. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at the Yazoo way before you were born. Oh, okay. Yazoo College. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
just for the value of those. Yeah, Zoom is in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, Zoom is So yeah. I was at the answer, mm -hmm. touring at the answer, mm -hmm. but I am from Natchez, Mississippi. I've heard of Natchez, okay, yeah. Okay, now, I want to, uh, I can't hear that well, but mm -hmm. the island, give me the name of the island. Um, Defusky Island? What's the name? Defusky. Defusky. Yes. It's okay. Defusky, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And it's Defusky. South Carolina. South Carolina, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Defusky. And what's the other one? Um, what's the other one? Um, what was the other one? Um, well, it's one down Austin Mm-hmm. Oh. Is it Austin Jekyll, Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island. I was in, in Savannah. Okay. But I grew up around Mars Streets ah. in Mississippi mm -hmm. on Highway 61 South. Okay. At the Hummachetta River. Ah, near the now, water. Uh, I noticed on your art. And here, in my mind, mm -hmm. it's a landscape of memory. Mm -hmm. It's like a spirit. Mm. You develop a spirit in your mind. Mm. But they, nobody else can interpret it. Mm. But if you have a spirit, let your spirit interpret your heart. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Kevin mm -hmm. Cole. Mm -hmm. like That's that. beautiful. Do you consider taking the actual moms and incorporated in the pieces? And, and even, even have, them, have an installation with the moss. Yes, I have. I've thought about that too. Uh, and some of these pieces, this is all actual moss in these. Um, and then that piece over there, I actually got on the ground and started hitting the paper with the moss to get some of the mark making in there. So I do really try in certain pieces to incorporate uh, moss into them. And I like that idea, Kevin, of installation. I've been thinking on that too. Right now in my studio, I've just got a pile of it right in the floor. And I think at some point it's going to find its way into something. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to elaborate. Moss is not a dead thing. Moss is a living growth plant that travels from tree to tree. Yes. Besides the circulation of the air, mm -hmm. it takes the moss to tree to tree. To tree to tree. Mm -hmm. It's a living organ. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. my that's about mm -hmm. speaking at this time. Mm -hmm. Moss is a living organ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that water, when I get it fresh, it has that aqua color. It's yes. like an aqua greenish blue, a beautiful yes. color. Mm. And I know then that it's alive. Yes. And I love it. And the smell, it has a really, you can almost smell the water with it. Yes. Oh, it has a smell. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. When it's fresh Very like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to get somebody else a chance to be, but I want to have one more. No. <laughs> no. Yes. Sure. So you, you talked about, uh, was it John? That was John T. Scott. Yes. And I feel like you've told me about John before. I probably um, have. Definitely, mm -hmm. um, probably one of the art teachers that heavily impacted your life. Yeah. And so, um, that legacy that you left behind is essentially in you and in a lot of these pieces, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so I want to know, like, what's like, you, you also influence a lot of artists, you influence me. Mm -hmm. I see you as mm -hmm. my John in, in, you know, comparison, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so. I just want to ask, like, what are, like, if you had to give, like, a piece of advice to artists who are, you know, upcoming um, in this world, um, that mm -hmm. you've, you've seen how it's changed mm -hmm. um, since you started mm -hmm. until now, um, what's that piece of advice that you would give? I'm going to give you a quote that John gave me. He would always say, pass it on. And what he meant by that is whatever knowledge you have, whatever experiences you had to pass that on. So I feel like he's passed on to me, right? So I'm passing on to you and you're passing on to others and what you do. And I have to share with you guys, I'm getting ready to brag right now. This young man is a former student of mine as well as his girlfriend sitting next to him. And 
his work and his story has been explored and put out there for the rest of the world on um, Shark Tank. Shark Tank, yes, yes. So you, my dear Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Walker, by the way, uh, are passing on to so many people and what you're doing and the young people who you are influencing now. So I would say my biggest advice would be to share and to pass on that knowledge of what I've learned, what I've experienced, what I've explored, what I've discovered, right? And then passing it on to others because I'll never forget those words he shared. Yeah. Oh, and he would always say, have your sketchbook with you all the time. All of the time. He would be on stage, right, Kevin? Presenting, and he would have his sketchbook right there. Mm. Yeah, always. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to thank you all for having this talk, and Eleanor for your work and for sharing your yes. inspiration. You. And I just feel like what you just said to Dwayne it makes me think mm -hmm. of the Spanish moms and mm -hmm. what this gentleman of said also about the living. Mm -hmm. the, the Spanish moss is the Spirit of passing mm -hmm. on from mm -hmm. you know person to person or generation mm -hmm. to generation, mm -hmm. the knowledge or the spirit. Mm -hmm. I feel it's really beautiful and really inspired to be here. Uh, thank you, exactly. thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And even to touch on that, mm -hmm. I feel like if I just walked in here mm -hmm. and nobody else was in here, I definitely feel your presence, like in each mm -hmm. of these pieces, yes. and as they connect together, I definitely mm -hmm. like if, if anybody just takes a glance around and then just takes a look at you and even gets the opportunity to get to know you a little bit more, mm -hmm. it's definitely a reflection of you and in terms of the landscape of memory, I feel like you're definitely the landscape and it's just a glimpse into your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're recording this. Yes. <laughs> no. Thank you, George. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, I, uh, about the hours you uh, went to, I don't know which one it is, that's what I can't be referring to that one, but you said that the, 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 it's being uh, developed, mm -hmm. the being developed, the hour. And at one time it's six on the other lane, and then, oh. and then now uh, they're about to lose it to developers. That's correct. We're hoping not, but it seems Overnight. like that can happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. It can uh, happen. And you go there, there's no lights, no nothing. And oh, no, that's, you're thinking of Hambitch. Yeah, that's the, where I do the artist residency. No, they're fine. You they're can fine. go there as an artist and just spend time uh, working on that's your craft. That's not what you're talking about, but they're building houses and things on there now? No, that's the Fusky Island. Fusky Island. Mm -hmm. Okay. This brings me to, uh, Persons that own land in areas mm -hmm. that have not did uh, inheritance preservation mm -hmm. of land. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm talking about uh, African Americans, uh, African American Negroes, of black folks, mm -hmm. okay, all the land in the South. They all left the South because uh, they migrated. But their parents there, but we migrated, we migrated from the South. Mm -hmm. And I am in the process of doing uh, heritage preservation of land. But why are you speaking of uh, nature? There's a place just like one outside of the world. And that place is uh, in Mississippi, but it's close to the Gulf of Mexico. Hmm. Okay, that's just like the one outside of the world. And it is so remote, but people live there for many, many years hmm. mm. until the water takes over the land. Mm -hmm. mm. And, uh, mm. but the main thing is, Land preservation. That's what I want to highlight. Right. Mm, thank you. Yes, Jim. Mm -hmm.
speak to that for just please, a second. Please, please. Right now, as we sit here mm -hmm. in Jeff's Alabama, yes. there is a conference going on about what you're talking about. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, it's in Jeff's Alabama, but in East Point is the Regional Office of the Federation of Southern Cooperatives. All right, at East Point. They have a whole organization dealing with exactly what you're talking about. Okay? So you can get in touch with them. Anybody who's interested in land, you know, holding on to land and stuff, that organization is there and they will take care of it. Thank you. No, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. This is what's a community of sharing. Yes. Definitely. Any other questions? Wait. Yes, Robin. So, Oh, absolutely, yes. So um, I use um, etching inks, and before I even do that, I spend time thinking about the abstraction of shapes that I'm going to be focusing on. I tear and um, all kinds of paper, and I, I spend time, the process of tearing is part of the ritual, right? Um, and then I use the etching inks and then I bring into the beeswax that comes into it. And the beeswax gives it this beautiful iridescence and this texture, right? And incorporates a whole new life force into it. Um, and then in this one, I did incorporate the Spanish moss in this one. Autumn has that. And so the colorations, um, layer and layer and layer and then the moss becomes a part of it as well and it's created on a it was created on a very large etching press and so the paper is put down on top of the image and it goes through an etching press and then it's pulled from the press as two original pieces from there mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted this one to have a more muted, quiet uh, color palette, neutral color palette versus some that are more colorful because I want you to see all the surprises in it. And the more you look at it, the more the underlayer begins to speak and come forward. Mm -hmm. Well, Eleanor, I want to say thank you so much thank you. for being here and for Landscape of Memory. I think we can all feel her presence in this work. Um, yeah. It's beautiful. We, we feel it. We feel Thank the spirituality you. of it. Um, we feel the land. Mm -hmm. We feel the Spanish moss. We feel all of these elements that you brought forth through this work. And we're so happy you're here. Thank you. And sharing this work. And I can't wait to see what you're doing next. Yes. Um, yes. Hopefully, I'll have the opportunity yes. to show more of your work. But I just oh, want to say great. thank you yeah. so much from the bottom. Of my thank heart, you. Being a part and of this thank you guys Senate. for taking time out of your And you're welcome to stay around and continue to talk with Eleanor and look at the work. And thank you again for coming out yes. on this Saturday and spending time with us. Thank you. Thank you.